Then they came back. They barely beat the Cowboys in Jerry World. And then they went back and laid an egg against the Redskins. They lost by two touchdowns to the Redskins at home. So they lost five of six, needing to win two games and needing help just to get into the playoffs. This is fact. They gave up more points than they scored this year. They were outscored by their opponents on the season. I believe they're the only playoff team that that could say that, that they were outscored by their opponents. I mean, they, they, they had some bad losses, guys. They lost to Seattle at home by double digits. Talked about the Redskins losing them by two t- twice. Uh, they gave up 50 to New Orleans. They gave up 38 to Green Bay. I mean, they were hurt. Coughlin doesn't panic. He stays the course. He believes in his team. He believes in his pass rush. That pass rush, if they can tote the rock, which they can, Eli can get the ball downfield, which they can, and they can rush the passer, which they can, they can win the whole thing too. I think they're the most balanced team left. The most balanced team left. They can pass, they can throw, they can stop the run, and they can rush the passer. And they have good coaching. We have two really good conference games coming up this weekend. You all should get excited about them. Two different type of games I think are going to happen, but I think both games are going to be heavyweight fights. I mean, in the AFC, you got Patriots and Ravens, one versus two. Offense versus defense. Hall of Fame coaches, Hall of Fame players all over the field. I mean, it's going to be great. I mean, this is, you know, you don't beat that. Tom Brady versus Ray Lewis and Ed Reed? Kidding me? Watch that every Sunday. Don't say you wouldn't either. NFC, same deal. I mean, that's going to be a dog fight. These are two rough and dirty teams. Not dirty as in, like, dirty play, but, I mean, these teams will get down and dirty, and they will scratch and claw, and they will get it in. And uh, it's going to be a fun game. Good coaches, good play. I mean, this is... I'm excited about these championship games, and uh, we'll get into the uh, breakdown of that a little bit later. But, um, yeah, I mean, if you guys don't think, I mean, there's a reason why the NFL is king in this country. And they, they just serve it to us on a platter, and we just devour it. We just eat it up. I mean, the way they do it. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit of that more when uh, I have company, when I'm not just talking to you. It's kind of weird having a conversation with people who can't talk back. But uh, we're going to switch it up. And uh, kind of do a little switcheroo here, and we'll talk real quick about the NCAA football, how that ended. So, uh, it, Alabama beat LSU. <sighs> I really wish that one day somebody would just blow up the BCS, because it's ruining my love of what should be absolutely a great sport i mean college football is great because they do it for the love of the game it's regionalized there's rivalries there's tradition i mean it's so good but it's just the postseason is so bad but don't get me wrong alabama should be playing LSU every single time it happens for the title, one versus two. There is nobody in the conversation. You telling me that Oklahoma State would have done something against either of those two teams? You're kidding me. They let Stanford put up 40-something points. 40 points! Andrew Luck is yes, he's the second coming of Joe Montana or whoever. But let's get down to the nitty gritty here. Has anybody looked at Stanford, like what they are, like for real? Stanford has, the, I think their two leading receivers are tight ends. I mean, this guy, Andrew Luck, is throwing to tight ends and running backs, and Oklahoma State gave up 
38 points. I mean, and like 600 yards. Let me check that real quick. Yeah, Andrew Luck was 27 for 31, 347 yards. His two biggest receivers, yeah, one was a tight end, one was a running back. Oklahoma State would have had no chance. They would have gotten a hole stomped in them. Alabama, LSU, definitely the two best teams. Um, People who say LSU should have a split national championship, okay, I'm not going to argue that you're wrong. LSU beat Alabama in Alabama, and Alabama turned around and beat LSU in a neutral site. So should there be a current national championship? It, you know, I can't argue against that. You know, they, they're clearly the two best teams. They finished with the same record. They each beat each other once. And that's the problem I have with college football. It's like it, the season ended, but it's kind of like, eh. Did it really end? Like, what, what happened? They just stopped playing. There's no finality to it. It sucks. I mean, think think about. I mean, yeah, Oklahoma State. I don't think. I don't think either. Let's just. Okay. I don't think anybody would have beaten any of those two teams any other way. Alabama and LSU were clearly the two best teams. But if you're Oklahoma State, yeah, you got a gripe. You bet your ass you got a gripe. They went 12 and one in the Big 12. Best wide receiver in the country. Big offense. They should have had a shot. I didn't think they deserved. Well, you know, I, I don't think they would have won, but they had a shot. I think Oregon deserved a shot. I mean, Oregon only lost what? I think Oregon only lost one game, and that was the LSU first game of the season. You know, I mean, they lost to LSU, and then and I think they ran. So, uh, well, they they lost to USC. Sorry, they lost to USC. Um. The USC was on probation. We'll, we'll get to USC a little bit later when we do a college football prediction in the crystal ball for next year. But, um, I mean, they, they just putting up obscene numbers. I mean, 56, 43, 41, 45, 43, 53, 49, 49, 45. Do I think they would have beaten LSU or Alabama? No. Would they have given them a game? Sure. Sure, sure they would have. But, again, it's about money. It's about the presidents and the conferences and the colleges stuffing their fat pockets. And the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poor. And, you know, it, it's so centered on the big six. I mean, it's, it's, it's a monopoly. I mean, I don't know if there's an antitrust exemption for that, but geez almighty. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll take the final poll, the top eight. Alabama, LSU, Okie State, Oregon, Arkansas, USC, Stanford, and Boise. You do an eight-game playoff, these are your first-round matchups, kids. Alabama, or excuse me, Boise State would at Alabama. You think Boise's scared to go into Alabama? Boise will play anybody, anywhere, anytime. That would be a great first round game. Stanford at LSU. Andrew Luck against that defense. That'd be fun, don't you think? How about this one? USC at Okie State. You like offense? That they would give you offense. And then the final first round game, Arkansas at Oregon. What are we missing here? Say all the higher seed teams win. Then you got Oregon at Alabama, Okie State at LSU. Let me mix it up, throw in an upset or two. You got you reseed, you got USC at Alabama, LSU, Oregon, Arkansas, Okie State. I mean, there, there's... what is so great about college basketball is the exact reason college football sucks exact reason why when college basketball ends you know who the champ is all the teams that you think deserve a chance to win the title have a chance to win the title Boise State had no chance this year they went 12 and 1 they had zero chance
They lost to TCU on the last play of the game on a play where TCU went for two for the win, and they got it. That essentially ended Boise's season, ended their hopes of winning a national championship right there. Saturday, November 12th, their, their chances went out the window. They went into Georgia and they punked the Bulldogs. They won by 14 points. These guys are not afraid to play anyone, and they will play anyone. And these guys don't have a chance to win the national championship. You know how ridiculous it is? They had to join the Big East so they can get into a BCS conference and qualify for this crap. Boise, Idaho. Big East. You want to drum up some big-time college rivalries? Let's get Boise State and Syracuse going every year. That's a big one. Jesus. All right. I'm done with college football. It makes me too mad. All right, we'll go to the local. Uh, NHL, Caps. They are on fire right now, kids. Um, if they can learn to win on the road... We'd have something cooking here again. I mean, these guys... Talk about bipolar. I, I don't know what, who these guys think they are. Are, are they the uh, high-flying Russians? Or are these guys this buttoned-up defensive team? Another problem. I mean, they just can't win on the road. I mean, what is the deal with these guys? I mean, you come in here and... You know, they fire Boudreaux, and I just, Dale Hunter, do I agree with the hire? Sure, give him a shot. Um, I, I, I do like the, the defense. They've really clamped down. I think this is the first time all year that they've, not all year, but since since the big losing streak and everything, that they've actually have been outscoring on goal differential. I mean, I, I going into tonight's game here uh, against the Islanders, uh, they I think they were plus one, finally. 17-5-1 um, at home. It's one of the best home records in the NHL. But they are 7-12 and 12 on the road, people. 7-12. and 12. Of all the teams, the season ended today. All the teams that would be in the playoffs... The Washington Capitals, by far, would have the worst road record of all the playoff teams. Not even close. The days of the Capitals blowing everybody out 5-2 to two and just dominating the Eastern Conference. The Southeast Division, I mean, they're, they just tied Florida for the Southeast Division. Those days are gone. They need to find a philosophy. They need to roll with it. They need to play better defense, which they are. But they got to get more consistent on the road. After tonight, they play the Islanders. They got six of seven on the road. At Montreal, at Carolina, at Pittsburgh. They come home for one game against Boston, who's destroying people lately. Then they, are, then they do the division again. They're at Tampa, at Florida. And then they go back to the form. They play Montreal again before coming back on February 5th, which is Super Bowl Sunday, to play Boston again at home. 